for any Xbox or PlayStation codes or cheap games on any platform, use the referral link in the description. It'll take you to G2A.com. Use the promo code CHEZ over there and you'll get yourself 3% cash back. For all No Identity merchandise, hats, hoodies and t-shirts, follow the link in the description down below to the No Identity Fan Fiber website. Hey guys, welcome to episode number 80 of My Player here on FIFA 17. Episode 80 and we are 80 rated, hoping to get slightly closer if not past the 81 rated barrier. In today's episode we start with the final of the preseason tournament against Napoli, side that we drew against earlier on in the tournament in the first game of this fourth season here by a goal to one, if that makes sense. I don't know why I phrased it like that. Napoli though to uh, be the first game and then we got a three or four week break until the Manchester United game, the first game of the Premier League season. But will we get a transfer offer worthy of your vote between now and then? At present, we are on the transfer list. However, we haven't drawn up or drummed up sufficient interest from teams that we would consider moving to. Apparently Sunderland are doubly interested in us. It's just a visual glitch there. Sunderland, Athletic Bilbao and Sunderland. We also know that Celta Vigo are interested in us too. But I wouldn't really consider going to any of those sides. So hopefully we can put in another good eye-catching performance here against Napoli. We've been having a very good pre-season tournament so far. And if we can continue to put in the good high level of performances, then fingers crossed we can get a, uh, a transfer offer that kind of justifies our on-pitch ability. We might not have the best overall rating right now, but we are definitely a goal threat. And let's see if we can continue to be a goal threat in this pre-season tournament final. Drop the video a like if you enjoy. Subscribe to the channel too to make sure you don't miss out on any further content. But for now, let's jump into this game against Napoli and then see what happens after that. Nkudu, Wanyama's there calling for it, but he's gone to Eric Dyer instead. It's Deli Alley into Wanyama. I call for the through ball. Play me quickly before I'm offside. I think I'm still on. I think. Can I get away from Koulibaly? I just can't. He's so strong. So very, very strong. We don't yet have the electric pace that we need to break away in situations like that. But unfortunately, it's just an accumulation of accomplishments we need. <gasps> was that in the box? I think it was. The referee has pointed to the spot. Penalty Napoli. Jan Vertonghen going to pick up a yellow card for that. And after we very nearly had enough opportunity at the other end. And oh, wow. It was on the line, I think. Hamsik, his initial reaction is to take it inside towards the box. And Jan Vertonghen just takes him out. Nowhere near it. He's dusted himself down. And he's going to take it himself. Marek Hamsik. Oh. Keeper went to dive high there, Hugo Lloris. And Hamsik kept it low. And you saw the way Lloris tried to bend his body back down to get an arm to it. But not able to. Tucked away underneath the goalkeeper. Perfect angle for the replay. Why well, should we dive high and then try and bend down low again? But unfortunately can't get there. Hamsik slots it in the bottom corner. It's 1-0 to Napoli. Holland. Into Wanyama. Eric Dyer. Deli Elliott will call for that. Dyer's kept the run going. And it's a really good one. And we'll find him. And I'll call for it back here. And smacking that home. Equaliser. Great finish on my left foot. Really pleased with that. I was contemplating trying to uh, work that back onto my right with the first that's strange someone wanting to <laughs> almost kiss Eric Dyer there I thought about trying to take a, a touch with my right foot to try and get it onto my favoured side but no just smacking it first time with the left and the defender well would have been in the way had he stayed there but moved out of the way and it's flown into that top corner past where he was stood really good finish Pochettino is happy with it hopefully some other top quality managers are um <laughs> I'm uh, pleased with it as well, because I'd very much like a move away, if you don't mind. Hello, I'm available for sale, you know. I can do that for your team as well. Sign me up. It's Wanyama. Quickly forward to me. Oh, God, I'm getting hounded by Hamsik. I'm fouled. We will play on. My guy could eventually get up. There we go. We might be able to get involved again. Kieran Trippier gets that in there. Wanyama to Trippier again. I'm drifting further and further wide here, hoping that eventually it could come through a gap like that. Oh, I was just about to try and get a little bit of footwork off to try and beat Tonelli, but we've won it back thanks to Nkudu. Could work it back into me and has done. Let's try that little bit of footwork now. That's worked brilliantly. Another shot on the left foot. It's going to drop to Deli Alley. Lays it off to Wanyama, who inexplicably cannot find the target from 10 yards out. Victor. Victor. How? How have you done that? I have... I just don't have the... That was the last thing he did on the pitch as well. Well, that's fitting. I would have substituted him off as well. Well done, Pochettino. Hopefully, Ander Herrera can do a little bit better. Into Ander Herrera. Pulled back to Davies. Henderson, we're dilly-dallying about with it on the edge of the box. On the edge of the half, sorry. 
edge of the box. I'd like to dilly-dally about with it on the edge of the box. It means we were closer to getting a second goal than we are right now. Nice tackle by Trippier. Or Trippier, sorry. Oh, that was an awful pass. Oh, sometimes I really wonder why I even bother calling for passes because sometimes they're so simple and the CPU still balls as it up. Nice tackle by Jordan Henderson there into Deli Alley. I'll call for it from him and he nearly kicks it against the man who's in front of him and a Herrera as well. But we've got it out there to Nkudu. Could work it back inside maybe. All right, I'll get myself in the box ready for a cross, although Koulibaly's there loitering, waiting to close me down again. Jordan Henderson gets crunched by Hamsik, but he rides the, rides the challenge well. I'll call for it through that gap. He's done well to find me. Help it on its way there to Deli Alli, who strikes it first time. Well held by Jan Sommer, though. 15 minutes to go. I thought he was going to throw that straight to me for a minute. 15 minutes to go. Otherwise, we are going to, I think, straight to penalties in pre-season. I'm not sure whether in the final it does go to extra time, but I'm pretty sure it goes straight to pens in a pre-season tournament. We might not need pens, though, if we can keep hold of this 2-1 lead. What a finish. I saw Koulibaly closing me down super quick and, I'll be honest, panicked and just shocked because I didn't see... Any other option on with a pass? I didn't think I'd squeeze it to Eric Dyer, so I just shot as soon as I possibly could with a button press. And look at the way I bent that around the keeper into that far corner. That is why our finishing is at like 92. Or nine, no, 93 I think our finishing is. I'm not sure, but it's clearly good enough to be scoring goals of that quality. Wow. Our fourth goal of pre-season. Tottenham 2, Napoli 1. We lead with 12 minutes to go. Here's Goulam into Cajon. Time running out here for Napoli. Tackled by Ander Herrera. And he will outmuscle Cajon to work the position to get onto the ball. That's a lovely ball by Nkudu. And I'm in space here. And we're on for a hat trick. Can I squeeze it home? No. Koulibaly. Oh, Voland with the cheeky little dink. Koulibaly has been my nemesis all game long. And he denies me the opportunity of a hat trick there. But we do get the third goal regardless. I thought that touch was a bit heavy there, wasn't it? I tried to slot it home, but. That is just the deftest of lobs there from Folland. I probably wouldn't have thought to dink it in that situation, but that is delightful. Koulibaly, Hamsik jumping through the air but getting nowhere near it, and the keeper on the floor. That is probably just as impressive a finish as my two strikes, to be fair. Great quick thinking from Kevin Folland. That's going to be Napoli 1, Tottenham 3, and the final whistle surely won't be moments in coming now because that was in stoppage time by the time we got to that. Joel Matip has been brought on for Kieran Trippier on the right-hand side of this defence now. Not really renowned as a right-back, Joel Matip, but not going to be needed in that position for long because there goes the final whistle. Only a matter of seconds on the pitch for him, but a 3-1 win, a brace for me. And uh, we couldn't really have hoped for better. Well, we could have hoped for better. I could have put that effort away and we could have got a hat trick, couldn't we? But still, a 9.0 rating and two goals. That's pretty superb. Let's see now if we get an offer for us from anyone between now and the start of the Premier League season against Manchester United. Just by heading accuracy and crossing going up one, we've actually jumped a significant portion of the way towards 81 there, which is very, very pleasing. Hopefully, with now the fact that we're training five different sessions we should start to see our overall really accelerate up now as we head towards the uh, the end of the transfer window and just basically towards the end of our career the rest of the series hopefully it would be nice to reach the 90s whether we will be able to do that or not I'm not sure it's not obviously every player in the world that ever reaches the the realms of 90 rated on FIFA so it might not be super realistic for me to just become the best player in the world. It might be nice to become the best player in the world, but it's not necessarily the end goal to have the highest overall rating. I'd like to. I'd rather be a player that just wins a lot of, uh, of trophies rather than a player that uh, you know ends up going for the, the personal accolade of having the highest rating on FIFA. So we'll have to wait and see. Jorginho is moving to Liverpool from Atleti. Strange, considering he's a Napoli player in real life. So he's moved twice in this save now. No news of any other moves with regards to Tottenham Hotspur, though. I, sh I could perhaps check the, uh, the news feed to see if anything's happen anything's happening uh, with regards to the club. I also perhaps could check and see if anyone else has uh, kind of announced their interest in me. Long passing goes up 1 to 54. The dithering heights of 54 with long passing. Let's have a look. Club news. Uh, preview against Napoli. Matip debut. Spurs win. Uh, we've signed Mate Matisse de Litt. All right, cool. We signed Burke Uskan in the last episode, but nothing massive going through with regards to Tottenham Hotspur yet. 
What position does he even play in, out of curiosity? Who are you, Delit? Uh, let's sort by name, because I can't re I can remember who his name was. But Oh, there's Ozcan. He's a 70 rated cam. Have we looked at that already? I think we looked at that in the last episode, didn't we? Uh, where are you? Matthias de Ligt. He's a centre back. 70 rated, 19 years of age. Looks pretty handy, actually, to be fair. Good on the ball as well, with decent passing stats at just 19. Could be a good signing for the club. Although, we've already signed Joel Matip as well. So, it's not really necessary to keep signing centre backs. We might like to strengthen elsewhere as well. Board, if you don't mind. Because we may genuinely end up staying here at Tottenham Hotspur if we don't get the offers in for us. Atletico have signed Ben Yedder from Sevilla, a player that I very much like. Let's stop that simulation a day too early for the training. A player that I very much like, Ben Yedder, as you may have noticed from my ultimate team exploits so far this year in the other series. -es. But, uh, more training. Is that going to be 81 rated with something going up? Vision goes up, but it doesn't affect my overall. Wonderful. Never mind. All right, let's have a quick look and see if anyone else is interested in me. I meant to do that a moment ago and completely forgot. It was Sunderland, Sunderland and... Yeah, Sunderland, Sunderland and Bilbao. And it's still Sunderland, Sunderland and Bilbao. And we're now very close. In fact, I think we're at the end of this week it will be on this Saturday. Yeah, the game against Manchester United. So, it's time to play our first Premier League game of the season. And unfortunately... It appears nobody wants to buy me. The whole staying at Tottenham... Oh, two emails. Hang on. Hang on. Match rescheduled. Hopefully it's not two matches rescheduled. That would be frustrating if it's two matches rescheduled. Two match rescheduled emails. Please don't be. Please be a transfer offer from someone that might I might genuinely want. Oh, typical. You absolute troll game. Two games have been rescheduled. <laughs> So we will play then this game against Manchester United. Oh, it's because there's a cut. Brilliant. Thanks. What a wonderful time to schedule a game. Two days after a Champions League qualifier. Absolutely fantastic. Cheers then. And then a game on the first as well. Superb. Well done, FIFA. That's I, We very much appreciate that. Well, the whole staying at Tottenham thing may genuinely be a scenario that plays out. But for now, let's jump into the Premier League against Manchester United. Daily into Dyer. Dyer to Wanyama. Call for it. We've got it. I mean, I've got minimal support. There's a lot of red and white shirts here, but we are actually working the ball about quite nicely. Wanyama could play that through again, and can I get there ahead of a boy? No, I can't. Again, it keeps telling me bad call for pass, but I have to do things like that. Otherwise, we just aren't going anywhere. Man United are defending so very well. Their shape is so difficult to break down, and our players are so reluctant to make runs forward that I have to call for passes in situations like that. So to artificially mark me down for it, I think is a little bit unfair, but that was blocked. At least it gave me a great run there. Was that poor? Was that shot that poor? Or did it take a deflection? Surely my shot wasn't just that bad. Yeah, it did take a deflection. Okay, good. <laughs> I thought for a moment my, uh, my shot was that bad. Corner to come in. It's headed my way. It's actually out of the flicks it on and then came off Wanyama, but straight at Sergio Romero. Nil-nil after 28 minutes. Wanyama into Lamella. Out wide to Kieran Trippier. Trippier could turn on it and look back. No, he's giving it to Wanyama. Trippier to Wanyama again. I'm going to just drop back into a more forward position. Dyer to Wanyama. We're just playing about with it in midfield here. I don't know whether they're happy with a draw or whether they're just nervous about giving it away in forward areas and getting caught on the counter-attack by pushing too many men forward. I'm not sure which one of the two it is, but at the minute, we aren't pushing men forward and we aren't getting in behind them or even creating opportunities. So I'm struggling to understand what the tactical decision is here from the uh, Tottenham players. Oh, Eric Dyer hits the base of the post. Chance comes out of nothing. I just played the ball inside and Dyer smacked that as hard as he possibly can with his left foot. And he's hit the woodwork there with a great strike. Wanyama gets that around the corner to me. I'll look through from Kulu, but uh, unfortunately, Fosu Mensah gets to tackle in. I'm trying to win it back off Jesse Lingard, but I can't. Fosu Mensah has his pass blocked off this time by Ben Davies. It's a throw to Manchester United. Ten minutes into the second half, that is easily the best chance we've had so far this game. But unfortunately for Eric Dyer, it's his last action on the field. Wanyama got substituted off by missing an open goal in the last game. This time, though, I think that was a little bit harsh to take him off. But Paul Pogba and Paolo Dybala are coming on for Manchester United. 
They mean business. Here's Damian. Swung into the middle. Paolo Zabala can't get there. It's going to drop to Schneidlin. Shoots. Go Ooh, awkward save by Lloris. I was going to say good save, but I really don't think that was a good save, to be honest. Corner to come in from that far side from Wayne Rooney, who obviously has a fantastic delivery. Now, will he find a red and white head? No, he finds Nkudu. He'll try again, though. And he might try someone or find someone at the second attempt. And no, he finds Alderweireld. Well, his delivery has been decent both times. It's just that he's only found a Tottenham man rather than a Manchester United man. Here's Paolo Dybala. Scored a cracker against this last time. Oh, that was brilliant. That was a wonderful team play. Paolo Dybala scored a great goal against us at the end of last season, if you cast your mind back. Rooney there drawing a good save out of Lloris. Manchester United turning up the pressure here. Paolo Dybala on that. Jordan Henderson with the weirdest clearance I've seen for a while. But, I mean, it worked. So, nil-nil with 30 minutes to go. Martial into Luke Shaw. Pull that back to Rooney, which he has done. Wow. I thought that was a shot from Rooney. And to be fair, I still think... Oh, Dybala trying to be very sneaky to try and squeeze that in the near post. I think that was a shot from Rooney that ended up with a ball at Dybala. But it was a great save from Lloris. Not once and then twice down low. Really good goalkeeping from the Frenchman. It's kept us in this. We've not really drawn that many saves out there goalkeeper whatsoever, to be honest. They're playing Sergio Romero as well. I don't know where... David De Gea is, if he's still at Manchester United or if he's transferred away. I can't remember if he has in this save or not. But Damian on the ball here to get it back to Jesse Lingard. There's still 10 minutes or so. That's a little bit more to go. Probably 15, including stoppage. So there's a chance for either side to win this. There's also equally a chance for both sides to continue to play out a stalemate. But we'll just have to wait and see. Deli Ali could play me in here. Or the man on the outside, which he's done well, is Jordan Henderson. I've got Eric Bailly with me. Henderson just driving into the box. Where's he going to go? I don't know where to go myself. Jordan Henderson into Trippier. Trippier turns, but tackled by Blind, and they're going to work it away. Oh, sums up our offensive game in this one. We were very good against Napoli, but unfortunately here, we've just kind of stumbled a little bit and not really found our rhythm. Trippier with the ball in, but I'm not going to beat Bailly in the middle, similarly to how I wasn't going to beat Koulibaly in the middle in the previous game. We had to play the ball ar on the, around on the floor against Napoli, and it worked. Here, though, Manchester United have defended much better, and that's why we're still goalless for now. That is a wonderful goal. The ball floated into Eric Bailly and his header was looping, looping, looping and there was nothing Hugo Lloris could do about it. Absolutely nothing. Really, really, really good goal from Manchester United. They're extremely disappointed that we haven't been able to keep them out for the entirety of the game but unfortunately, oh, Eric Bailly pops up with a set piece and we're 1-0 down. Rooney with the floated ball. And I didn't think he was going to win the header, which is why I wasn't commentating. But he did. And not only did he win the header, he placed it absolutely perfectly over Lloris and under the bar to make it 1-0 Manchester United. There goes the final whistle. Unfortunately, just as it was at the end of last season, it's a win for Manchester United against Tottenham Hotspur. Eric Bailly with the only goal of the game. We came close through Eric Dyer's strike that hit the post, but unfortunately... It was a poor team performance and a poor personal performance that really shows that the side aren't as good as we thought we might have been after that pre-season, to be completely honest. Unfortunately, unfortunately, not good enough to hold off Manchester United. Arsenal start their title defence with a 2-0 win against Everton. But unfortunately for us, unfortunately seems to be the word of the moment right now, uh, we aren't able to start the season with any points. Could we get ourselves up to 81 rated, though, to end the episode? We'll have to wait and see. Are we going to go up here? with? Yes, we are. We are now 81 rated. Free kick accuracy, crossing and dribbling all go up one. We are now just 81 rated. Now, is that going to drum up some extra interest? I'm not sure. We'll advance as far as this game against Ruben Kazan, of course. And then we'll wait and see. And, oh, Pogba wants to leave Manchester United. That's interesting. I'd very much like Pogba here at Tottenham. Or for someone else to come in for me and then that side to buy Pogba. That might be even better. Let's have a, a look then and see if anyone else is interested in this. Or is it still Sunderland, Sunderland and Bilbao? It's Sunderland, Sunderland and Bilbao. Okay. Well, it does look like we're going to be staying here at Tottenham the way things are going so far. But I would, even if we do stay here at Tottenham, I would very much like a move away in January, to be honest. 
Oh well, that's going to be all for now. Can we help Tottenham qualify for the Champions League? That will be the main aim in tomorrow's... Is it tomorrow? Or is this Sunday? This might be Sunday's. In Tuesday... The, in the next episode, whenever that may be, uh, we will start our attempt, the first of two legs, to try and get Tottenham into the Champions League for this season. Drop the video a like if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel too for more, but for now, that's all from me. I'll see you next time.